Okay, so we're going to look at um, how to graphically represent um, data using a frequency distribution or a, in WAMAP it's called a group, grouped frequency distribution table, GFDT. I've never seen that acronym used anywhere else, but uh, it is on your homework. So GFDT is what we're about to do, or better, better known as a frequency distribution. So the problem says, um, create a frequency distribution from the following ages. 12, 45, 19, 28, 32, 26, 42, 31, 20, 28, 16, 19, 48, 22, 34, and 40. Not a bad idea to try this problem on your own, so maybe just jot those down, pause, and go to the next section. Um, our job is to create bins to put these uh, data elements into a table, and we're going to figure out how many bins we need first. So. A good rule of thumb is to have 8 to 15 bins. Um, so what we do is figure out the total range. So I took the minimum value of 12 and the maximum value of 48. You know, you could sort these data values. Sometimes it makes it easier to make the frequency distribution. I didn't. I just looked at them. And then the range there is 36, 48 minus 12. Um, and I think I, if I used 8 bins, and I don't have that many data elements, so eight is probably plenty here. Um, if I had you know, hundreds of data elements, I might use 15 bins, or if I had even more, I could, I could maybe use you know, maybe 20, but you don't wanna have too many bins because you kind of lose um, the point of making it, uh, you, you lose the point of the representation of the data. Um, so eight to 15 will be a good rule of thumb. When I divide 30, the range by eight, I get 4.5, so the easiest, then I pick the easiest bin width to use. So I'm gonna use a bin width of five, and we're gonna start at 10. So we have to make that decision. Um, or maybe you know, on some, top, on some of the practice worksheets, I've told you where to start and what the bin width should be. So we set that up, and this is a place where people struggle. You know, sometimes we think, oh, it's a bin width of five, so it should go from 10 to 15. But actually, the five years goes between the start of each of the bins. So it, the first bin starts at 10, the next bin would start at 15, and then 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. So I usually figure out the starting values for the, the, the bins first, and then that helps you figure out the ending values. So the first bin goes from, from 10 to 14, from 15 to 19 from 20 to 24. Similarly, if I have these values and, and I'm asked, you know, what is the bin width? You don't calculate it by looking at the difference between 10 and 14, because that would be only four. You calculate the bin width by looking at the difference between any two starting values or any two ending values. So 15 minus 10, 5, 19 minus 14, also five. I'm just going through and making some Spaces makes it look a little better. Um, and you know, you could just do this on paper. That's how I would do it. Okay, moving on. So then we need to count the frequencies. And actually, you know, when I do this, what I would do is I would suggest that you just kind of go through, and I'm gonna do this right now with you. I can with my pen. Maybe. Okay, so with my pen, I'm gonna go over here to 12 and I'm gonna put a tick mark on this first bin because 12 is between 10 and 14. And then 45 is between 45 and 49, put a tick mark. 19, maybe kind of underline it and I've got them. 19, put a tick mark. 28, put a tick mark in the right bin. 32, put a tick mark. 26. 42, 31, 20. So this way I don't, I don't just keep adding the numbers. I just do these little tick marks. It allows me to count them up. 28, 16, uh -oh. ah, sorry. Hey, okay, stop it. About that, I'm, I'm still learning this pad. I don't know why that's not letting me do what I want to do. Uh oh, undo. 
All right, 16 is over here. Come on. At 16, then we got 19. 48 would be next. It's down here. 22. Yeah, I'm still learning the writing. So if some of my writing gets hard to read, because you guys are guinea pigs. 34 and 40. So the advantage of doing this tick mark thing is then I can go through and say, okay, there's one of these, three of these, two of those, three of these, three in this bin, there's zero in this bin, two in that bin, and two in that bin. And I can actually count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 total, and I have 16 data elements. I already counted those. So it's a good way to check that you've got them all. Okay. And again, the key there is the setup, the bin starting at the bin width of five, starting at 10, and then having the difference go between the starting values, 10 to 15 to 20, and then figuring out the ending values. Um, there are some definitions. Oh, I'll get there in a second. So there's just my frequency distribution typed in. And then some definitions in the PowerPoint presentation in chapter two, and they are on page, I think, 21, 22. Um, and it's really that first little bit of homework in, in 2B. And there's questions about a GFDT, and again, that's the grouped frequency distribution table. Uh, the lower class limit and the upper class limit, those are the lower values and the upper values of each class. So for example, the lower class limit of the first class is 10. The upper class limit of that first class is 14. The next class or bin, these are called classes or bins, has a lower limit of 15 and an upper limit of 19. Okay, so again, to find the class width, that's the difference between any two adjacent starting values. So 15 minus 10, equal five. Um, the midpoint of the third class. So the midpoint down here, it's the average of the upper and lower class limits. So these definitions you'll want to know. Um, so the, the third bin is third class is here. So we would average 20 and 24. 24 plus 20 divided by 2 equals 22. So that midpoint of the third class is 22. The upper limit of the last class is down here, 49. The lower limit of the fourth class, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's here, 25. And the class boundary between the fifth and sixth classes. So let's go back. Class boundary is the midpoint between con two consecutive classes. So the class boundary between the fifth and the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, there's the fifth, there's the sixth. It's halfway between 34 and 35. So the midpoint between 34 and 35. I mean, that's, that's clearly 34.5. Um, I can just add them up if I want and divide by two. I want to be formal about it, or you can just say 34.5. Okay, so class widths, you subtract the, any two consecutive starting values. Uh, the midpoint, you add the values to start the lower and the upper class limits, divide by two. Upper class limits, the ending value of the class. The lower class limit is the starting value of the class. And then the boundaries, are the midpoints between two, any two classes. So a relative frequency is a little bit different. You start with basically your frequency distribution, which I've done here, and then to find the relative frequency, it just says, you know, how many are in that class relative to the total amount? So, you know, in this problem, we have 16 data elements total. Um, so the relative frequency in this first bin is one out of 16. And you could leave that as a fraction or you could convert it to a decimal. So I'm, 
I'm, I'm showing you both. Or you could convert it to a percentage. So it sort of depends on what, within what context are you working um, or what is the problem asking for. So um, here I'll just convert to a decimal. So we divide by 16 and my notebook is doing it for me. So two divided by 16 for this third one equals one, two, five, three, divided by 16 equals one, eight, seven, five. Divide each of them by 16 and it gives us the relative frequency within each class. Um, I suppose if you were if you were leaving the fractions, you know, it's actually easier to leave them over 16 because you can see that everything adds up to 16 over 16 which is one. Um, might be a little bit careful on the homework with fractions. If it says, you know, enter a reduced fraction, then obviously two sixteenths would need to be reduced to one eighth. But in this situation, um, I would either just leave it as two sixteenths or convert it to a decimal. Probably gonna be fine. Um, and then there's one more type of frequency distribution. That's the cumulative frequency distribution. You know, how that works is we would start with a, again, start with a frequency distribution. So I've already done that. And then, you know, you're looking for the cumulative frequency as you increase, as you go from class to class. So instead of having the same boundaries, you know, this first person, this one age here is everyone who's less than 15 years old. So they're actually less than the next age in the, the first the, 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 up the lower limit of the second class. Um, you could also say it's less than or equal to, uh, you could say less than or equal to 14, but technically, you know, this, this first class actually goes to 14.5, and the next class actually starts at 14.5. So you know, the, the, there's a boundary in between each of the classes, and we assume that these classes actually touch, even though we don't put them over in the table. So better to say less than 15 here. And we have one person less than 15. And if I, if I fill these all in, um, using the, the, the upper value of the next class, so less than 15, less than 20, less than 25, down to less than 50. And then we just take the cumulative. How many total people are, are younger than 15? One. How many total are, less than, are younger than 20? We add these together, so one plus three giving me four. And then I take that four, and I want, to, if I want to know how many are younger than 25, I can add these two to it. I could just get six, or I could write it out four plus two, six. And then I take the six people who are younger than 25, and I add the three people who are between 25 and 29 to get everyone who's less than 30. So six plus three, and again, that's gonna equal nine. Add three again. Nine plus three, 12. Um, one thing, so there's no additional people in that next class, so you'd be adding 12 plus zero, but I'll just write 12. I'll just keep going, you get the idea. Add two more, 16 people total. This value here should always be the total number of people because you've reached everyone in the class. Okay, so that's a cumulative frequency distribution. So, you know, Real quick, we have a frequency distribution. And then you have the relative frequency distribution. That just divides by the total. And then you have a cumulative frequency distribution, and that's looking at how many people up to that value. Um, and these are all just different ways to represent a set of data, so they don't have to look at all the raw data. Obviously, with 16 people, it's not that big a deal, but if you had you know, 40 or 50 ages, it's much easier to kind of figure out, you know, where is everyone at? Where are their ages? Okay. And then we could draw what's called a histogram, and that's drawn from the frequency distribution. Um, it's just basically a bar graph. The one thing that you want to have happen is you want the bars to touch. So in order for the bars to touch, you have to decide on the scale. And so on one side, I'm gonna just go up by one, two, three, four, five, because you can see the highest frequency is three here. So I don't have to go higher than five. On the bottom scale, on my axes, I'm gonna have them all be the same width, and I'm gonna have sort of, I sort of choose, um, 
the value for the second midpoint first, right here, is halfway between the 14 and the 15. 14.5. And then I would add the class width to that. So I would come over here, you know, 14.5 plus the class width is 5, giving me the 19.5 for the next spot. And then once I have the 14.5 and the 19.5, I can just keep adding 5, 24.5, 29.5, 34.5, etc. And then I also need to go back and get the, oops, get the 9.5 as my starting value because it's actually, a, this bin is going to go from 9.5 to 14.5. All right, I'm going to get my face out of the way. And I've done the table here for you. So I have one person in the first bin. So that's this guy here. And then the next bin we have three. So actually I could number these if I wanted. One, I don't have to. It's kind of obvious that it goes up by one each. Um, I could shade them. And again, usually we just draw these by hand. Three in the next bin and then two in the next bin. Three, both the next bins. There is no one in that bin, so that's just an empty space. You have to leave it there. Two people in this bin and two in that bin. And that is a histogram. And, and, and so it's just a bar graph of the frequency distribution, but the bars touch. And so these guys, again, downstairs here, are the class boundaries. Um, and I suspect what I'll do for the test on this content is um, I'll have you draw one and then take a picture and upload it to Canvas. I think it's the easiest way to do that. So we might we might have a little practice problem where I just have you do a graph, take a picture, email it to yourself, upload it to Canvas, hand it in so you can know how to do that before the test comes around. Um, but I might do that with us. Maybe I'll do that with a stem and leaf plot, or I might do it with a histogram type thing. Okay, um, I think that's it. That should help if you're having questions on the problems dealing with histograms or frequency distributions. Oh, and I'm going to do another one in a minute, um, the same problem, but I'm going to do it in Excel.